back to Artie Lang News Center and our expert analysis. Live at motherfucking fire, over now. Bomb show tonight. A white man driving, a stuff in his face. Artie Lang, Don Ho. He's gambling on human lives. Oh, oh. When I'm Colleen May, breaking news from the Channel 8 newsroom. Eyewitness News has learned that comedian Artie Lang was found dead in his hotel room at the Hard Rock. Lang was in Las Vegas for the taping of the Howard Stern Show. The hotel has confirmed his death and says that Lang's girlfriend found his body around 7 o'clock this morning. He was taken to UMC where he was pronounced dead. We are following this breaking story and we will, of course, update you as new information becomes available. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Look who it is. Artie! Uh, well, listen. Uh, this is. Are we on the air? Yes, we are. <laughs> Good. Good <enough. laughs> you know, for a little while. But the great Ben Bailey is here. I'm going to do the. the, oh, the wow, the great, great, Thanks, great, uh, great comic, and uh, you know, is uh, you know, was the host of a. I guess you could definitely call it a, what's now a cult classic show. It was really popular. I uh, I used to see it all the time on the road at night, ca- cash cab, and. Uh, you know, Ben and I didn't know each other well, well, but um, it was always friendly when I saw him. And I, I, uh, I was with my uncle and my cousin, and uh, three Gindaloons looking for a restaurant in the Lower East Side. And then all my uncle kept saying, "Like, what chains around here? Like, we get it, all right." <laughs> That's what New York does. It changes. You know? It's so well, different. Right. Last time he was here, and Natalie Wood was standing right there. Last time I was here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christopher Walken drowned her. Or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was here on the set of Splendor in the Grass. Was the last time. He was here. <laughs> I have it's a, changed I, so much. <laughs> I have an Uncle Perry who... There's he, a bridge to Brooklyn. <laughs> they built a few of them. <laughs> There's a few enclosures. <laughs> uh, my my uh, Uncle Perry, uh, this guy's father, I was just telling Danny, you know, it just makes me laugh. He walks around all day. He's 84 years old. He's got that voice activated thing. You yell the name into the phone and uh, dial it. <laughs> and he's, he's got socks and sandals right out of central casting with a V-neck like guinea tea. And he walks around all day screaming into the phone names like, Ed Del Vecchio! <laughs> <laughs> and he gets I, I know a guy named right. Ed Del Vecchio for real. Knows. Everybody knows. And he gets like, and he goes, he goes, Tony out of bottle. <laughs> and then he gets me, he goes, Tony fucking out of bottle. <laughs> this thing don't work. And he gets like a florist. He gets like a motto's florist. <laughs> Who's this? Put your father on. I said, this is a, a motto's florist. What? <laughs> So you're gonna have to type "fucking" into the names of all his contacts. This would you turn some sort of fig? Call the fucking florist. <laughs> That's the best. Line. The best line ever in The Sopranos. Uncle Junior is trying to talk to the woman on the, uh, information, and she doesn't recognize. She, she doesn't understand them. And he goes, uh, "Belleville, New Jersey." And she goes, "What?" He goes, "Cocksucker, Belleville." <laughs> that was improvised. Yeah, that's all he does. Tony Ed Frantantoni. <laughs> all one name. And for, you motherfucker. You, and shut like, up, I'll give you a crack. <laughs> I'll give you he such says, a pinch. The landscaping guys. Yeah. Remember Paulie Walnuts? <laughs> uh, right, he goes right. and muscles the landscaper. Uh, 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 and the guy's like, oh. Why? Well, uh, <laughs> shut up, I'll give you a crack. That poor landscaper. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, in, in one episode, everybody kicked his ass. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You yeah. see the chain of events. Just trying to earn a, a right. fucking living. And the poor guy's guy. son. You see the chain of events that uh, happen that leads to him getting his arm broken because he's not raking leaves. Because <laughs> he wants to. He, he's an asshole who wants to get paid for raking leaves 14 hours of that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, you know, yeah, you, you're Jersey. You'll appreciate this. The fa- my fans know about this. Uh, there's 14 of them uh, following the show. Uh, hey everybody, we ran the numbers. It's the least successful podcast in the history of broadcasting. And I blame that on Dan. Am I allowed to swear? I just did. Anything is poor pie. It's podcast. Anything you want. To... Should have asked first. But... We, we could murder the maid in there. You can move it. You can move a dead body. <laughs> I find that uh, this is so under the radar. The show, uh, and uh, I've, I've said things. I've tried to get fired. Uh, from show business. But then I, I tried to kick that show business and I realized I'm not I'm not technically in show business <laughs> anymore. Uh, they, 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 we were discussing at the table the, the, what's the similarities between the mafia 
and uh, show business because they, they had a special about that. Like I said, Rich Voss can't get in either one of them. <laughs> 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 My Uncle Frankie used to send me to a construction site. He was a union guy. and uh, He uh, he always had a guy he had some beef with, and he would tell me when I was 17, just walk over there. He goes, walk over there, jerk. Just go up to him and just say, like, uh, Frankie Bento, just say my name and then uh, say, like, sheetrock. Let's see what he says. <laughs> Why? I said, what? <laughs> you know, just say, say my name and then just say sheetrock? <laughs> say, like, uh, say my name and then sheetrock shipment. Say something like that. I go, okay, well, I'm 17. The guy's 42. <laughs> I go, all right. So I find a guy. So at the next barbecue, he looks, he comes over. I had this exact conversation, Ben, with Michael Frank. I'm going to say 42 times. <laughs> He'll make me do that. And he comes over and goes, do you see that guy? What'd he say? Then what'd you say? Then what'd he do? <laughs> then what'd you do? <laughs> then what'd he say when you did that? <laughs> He's a jerk off. <laughs> It never fails. It never fucking fails. Michael Frank's dead 10 years. I feel like digging him up and trying to make him say that. Like, hey, hey, oh, I, I would avoid him for like, I until I can make a gobble sandwich. Get some sustenance for the conversation. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> He didn't remember, remember. what he say when you said that? <laughs> what did he do when you said that? He never remembered my name. He goes, hey, 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 Wooly. He called me, what? hey, Wooly. I go, what? He goes, he goes hey, did you see that guy? <laughs> what did he say? Then what did you say? <laughs> then what did he do? Then what did you do? Then what did he say when you did that? <laughs> He's a jerk. I, I, you know, after a while, I just, a after a while, off. I just cut to the point. I said, "You see that guy? Yeah, he's a jerk off." Just... <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. We did every guy that ever walked by. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. I didn't go to. You know, we're talking about education. What is your education, Ben? I do. Uh... I'm largely uh, uneducated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're from the uneducated Bailey. I've gone to the school of hard knocks. <laughs> uh, well, listen, Ethley Bailey. <laughs> George Bailey, a lot of famous. George Bailey. Bailey's my grandfather. Well, yeah, and he was from uh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Too. Born in the same year as George Bailey that, in the movie. Is that true? Yeah. And uh, so, what? Now you're from Ch Chatham, you said. Yeah. Your Jersey. Yeah, guy. I grew up in Chatham. And uh, that's a good town, Chatham. Chatham, a, Chatham, shit right out of me. <laughs> is that the slogan? <laughs> was that the uh, the white chili? Chatham, Chatham, shit right out of. <laughs> The black chicks in high school, the cheerleading they did was so superior to the white chicks. And I would say, like, Jimmy the Greek was drunk, but he was right. They have an extra bone in their ankle. I don't care. I mean, that's not racist. They have an extra bone in their ankle. Did he say that? You remember Is Jimmy? that true? Oh, Jimmy the Greek said that. That's how I got fired. Some, oh, I thought he, I, some uppity, I thought he said. I thought he said, was talking about the some uppity football reporter. players. Oh, no, that, well, here, Howard Cosell. Saying it was larger, said, they were larger and stronger as they were bred to right, be that's so. that's Jimmy the Greek. That's that was all, Jimmy the that's Greek, right? That's part of the same insane monologue. And then Howard said, look Howard at that little monkey right. go. <laughs> about, uh, Alvin about, Garnett. Yeah. Oh, was, Alvin yeah. Garrett. Alvin that, Garrett. I thought it was Joe Morris. It was you know, Alvin Garrett. Right. On the, uh, Joe Morris, actually, uh, no one would give him shit because he actually does look, well, we'll go on. <laughs> I, uh, the, 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 we'll, we'll go on. <laughs> Good one. Leave it in. Good one, it. which reminds me of the problem with this business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said the other day, I went to the uh, 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 Black Lives Matter rally, and I'm not political. I just want to see if I got my wallet back. <laughs> and I... Oh, they must have... <laughs> They must have gone. <laughs> Where were you when you said that? <laughs> I was uh, at a barbecue with Michael Chase. No, <laughs> oh, no Michael. I, I actually, all the black comics defended me. This was the nicest thing ever these guys did. I don't know why. They, 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 because they knew it was a joke. We tell jokes for a living. Uh, remember the, the, the guy, the fat guy uh, in Staten Island uh, who said, I can't breathe? And that was the slogan, I can't breathe for a while. And remember that thing I got choked out? Yes, You know, I'm talking about the big fat guy. So uh, I... Uh, I said, you know, the slogans, I'm all for, uh, you know, the, 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 the plight of the blacks and uh, equality, but these slogans are affecting my sex life. I was having sex with a black chick the other day, and she just screamed out in the middle of it, I can't breathe. <laughs> and I said, well, can we have to get political? <laughs> and she said, no, you're on my rib, I can't breathe. <laughs> and I turned it into a fat joke. It got a big laugh. One person on Twitter was all mad at me, and uh, it turned into a thing. But then all the black comments came out in droves. And, and said, "This is funny. It's yeah. a joke." Yeah. And I still, uh, I still got fired from Twitter. <laughs> you were, I, you've been fired from Twitter. Yeah, I get suspended from Twitter. Oh, there's no reason for me to be here then. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I got back <laughs> on. Kidding. If you're not on Twitter, I'm not into this. I got back on. I'm still. I'm currently in a feud with a kid from Iowa. <laughs> Artie's black. Uh, no, Artie's bloated liver. It's, it's giving me so much shit lately. Those guys. Yeah. 
came to your aid. They did. They get it that it was no, a joke. No, they did. It's bad. Michael J is a great guy. He's a powerful guy because of SNL. He's the type of kid who'll be running show business one day. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and funny and just like uh, efficient. Yeah. Uh, everything I'm not. He's a very nice guy. And he's the greatest guy in the world. You talk and to me like, wow, this guy, he's nicer than, yeah, I, than you know, maybe I, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, and I, I uh, Marina Franklin was very nice to me and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, just a sweet girl. Well, as comedians, we feel like we can joke about anything and everything. Right. Well, sometimes you, and, I guess people go too but far. But people who are not comedians... Uh, or don't are not big fans of comedy, or don't are always in tune with that. They right. don't. They don't. Well, no. Like I mean, there's time, people in your life that think that's funny, and there's people oh, that absolutely. are like, "That's over the line, Artie." Um, well, I, I you I, know who those people are, I got right? In trouble, right? No, I got in trouble for this joke. It was the best joke I've. I'm not getting better than this. I said uh, there was a guy in the news that he was a 102 year old Jewish guy who, who, who survived Auschwitz. Became an insanely successful. I'm so uh, afraid uh, of what you're well, about to say. Right insane, now. <laughs> listen to me. An insanely successful plumber. Which how odd is that? That's, uh, moves to Union County. He's like the most requested plumber in Union County. And I said he's the only guy ever, only person ever, to make both Schindler's and Angie's list. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm not getting better than that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and did people go crazy on you well, about some that? Some people, you know, the anti-defamation. Before you know it, the end is in trouble. Uh, and. Uh, you know Spielberg's uh, you know, he won't put me in Howard the Duck too. <laughs> uh, no, it's I can't very, believe they're making that. Uh, <laughs> Full <laughs> again after all these years. Boy, are you gullible? I, <laughs> it's you. I just believe everything you say. <laughs> no matter what, Artie told me he bought a water park. And <laughs> no, I said I bought. A, I'm the shittiest with money. I bought a, a water park in Flint, Michigan, two years ago. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, Artie! He said, he said, are you serious? Yeah, he said to me, Dude, that's you, been in the news dude, about water, and like. <laughs> Dude, you recently, gotta, dude, you got to be getting killed on that. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the, a lot of the kids who don't understand the, the signs can still go. Uh, <laughs> just dig the hole deeper. Just dig it deeper. By the way, I'm who's the? I, I got the last laugh with the uh, the Black Lives Matter thing because a guy's cousin knew a guy that had the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> guy's cousin. Uh, you know, I'm having a big trouble here. There's, everybody in this building is like a modern day pilgrim. Really white people who are in finance, they move here, and they're all in this building. They're very snooty, and they look down at me because they feel I'm new money. And uh, you know, they don't like showbiz types. Like remember in uh, uh, in Gilligan's Island, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Howell hated uh, Ginger because she was showbiz. And uh, that's why that's the example I point out. <laughs> it makes me look stupider. Is that the Howells but that I, live yeah, downstairs? The Howells, yeah. Thurston, <laughs> Jim Backus. I I can't see. I can't see. Uh, open your eyes. Open. Your eyes. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, that's because you're blinking, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> okay, true story. They, they 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 wanted me to come to the meeting because they felt these were these people because they were blue collar might be my fans. These little rich fucking kids have their four thousand dollar bikes to ride, and the kids from the projects, the Puerto Rican kids, came and steal, stole the bikes, and that was becoming an issue. And these people were such assholes. I said, I got up and I said, listen, if I see a Puerto Rican kid stealing one of your kids' bikes, I am helping that kid steal the bike. <laughs> I, 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 and if he doesn't doesn't steal the bike, I will I will get the bike later on and bring it to the kids' home and say, this is now your bike, <laughs> Peppy. <laughs> And I will say here, fellas, have added. <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, I don't like these little kids. They have attitudes. They're already they're already ordering me around. Oh, they're, they're entitled. Seven years old. Entitled little guys. Yeah, yeah they're, they're very they're very like you know one kid had a One Direction shirt on. I and it was just me and him and uh, like eight years old. Me and him in the, in the elevator. And I looked at her. I said, "Dude, that's a gay shirt." <laughs> okay, okay. I said it's a gay shirt, and this is what he said to me: "You're gay." <laughs> and I, I didn't have a cup. He fucking got me. <laughs> Dude, that's a scene in a movie right there. I know, but you and an eight-year-old arguing in the elevator. Ben, how witty is this kid? I, I said, "That's a gay I, shirt." I didn't get the word "t" out. The, the letter "t," the "t" in shirt. He said, "You're gay." <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. And then he hit all every floor and ran out. <laughs> Good luck. It's it's a local now, fatty. <laughs> You're on a local now, Tubby. And guess who? Guess I, I, I I'm, I'm talking to my parents later. Guess who touched my ass inappropriately? <laughs> Mr. Sandusky in twelve oh four. Is that your real name? Yeah, it is. Sandusky. I, that's another bit I got to clean up. I got to see. I feel I'm too raw. 
I, uh, I do a thing. I, the Catholic Church for a hundred years here was their policy. They said to the priest, when you get done fucking every kid in Pittsburgh, let us know we'll move you to Boston. <laughs> when you get done fucking every kid in Boston, let us know we'll move you to Harrisburg. <laughs> when you get done fucking every kid in Harrisburg, let us know we'll make you the defensive coordinator for Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It's like an oil painting. <laughs> But uh, listen, I, I I like it better now as a, as a jaded comic when people don't laugh because I like making these young kids mad more than I like making them laugh. I want to offend them. I think you're reminding them of shit they don't want to be reminded uh, of. Well, they're not prepared when you to say like, that. Well, you know, I th- like, yeah, you're right. But they're not in the safe it's fucking spaces. funny, and it's true. Yeah, it it's is. It's not like you're making well, something up. Well, it's based up. on honesty. Right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, you know, uh, exactly. That's a good point. That's a good point. They don't, uh, rich kids are, have these shut in the, these safe spaces. They go to school with other rich white kids. They don't know any other culture. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, newsflash. That's a, where I grew up. I grew up. It's all white. There's nobody. Well, Chad, but you you, you grew up. Uh, you just a blue collar. But I lived in Kentucky before that. that that's a uh, was very that like, racially what? mixed school. Oh yeah. Where the well, kids. Some kids were bust in. With black kids or white kids? Uh, black kids were bust in right. school. Oh, that wow. I was in. Remember busing? You remember? Oh, like, absolutely. Well, I lived in Union, New Jersey, where we were the only town. We won like an award or something because we bust white kids got busted in the black neighborhood. One grade, sixth grade, we went into the black neighborhood, and uh, that was like a big thing. Um, yeah. un- unsuccessful program. <laughs> Not a great idea, as it turns <laughs> but out. But it lasted a while. We called it but I knew bl- I had black friends because oh, of I had that. a ton of them, yeah. By the time I moved to Chatham, New Jersey, I had lived and gone to school with black kids right. in Kentucky for a few years. I, why not? I was like, where? The, so, but uh, the other kids that grew up in the town that I did, by the time they were, you know, out in the world, they were like, oh my God, there's there's people of different colors in the world. Right, but that's what I mean. These this kids, is a whole different... These kids watch TV, and they, you know, not everybody's like Blair Underwood on L.A. Law. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And some kids, you know. I was thinking Blair from Facts of Life. <laughs> Not everybody's like her either. <laughs> or Gary Coleman. <laughs> that's another guy. I, I got. That's what these kids don't get. I go. I I burn all the bridges you can burn in show business. I burn all of them. As a matter of fact, I was on a crack den in L.A. once, and I accidentally burned Todd Bridges. <laughs> they sit there again. I said, "Google Todd Bridges. You'll love that job. You'll love it." And it doesn't work with Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> I told Esty that it doesn't work with Jeff or Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> Arty changed. Bo, maybe. Yeah, maybe Bo. Bo, Bo. <laughs> yeah, Bo's disgusting. <laughs> I, yeah, but one of my first jokes I got I got in trouble with was Esty. I said, um, I said, uh, you know, the, in Florida, I read in a science magazine. Uh, the jokes unbelievable, right there. I'm reading a science magazine, but uh, I, I said, <laughs> this is a ridiculous premise. I said, shut up, <laughs> get off the stage. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> you don't have a water park in Flint, Michigan. We just googled you. Uh, <laughs> I still can't believe you bought that place. I love it. You know what? It's, I, if, if nothing else, I'm keeping it for my family. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice weekend getaway. <laughs> Fuck you. We're having a good time. <laughs> Dad, I have something feels like lead in my stomach. Shut up. <laughs> Look at the poor kids. They're dealing with it. I, I said, uh, they did, in Florida, this was in the late 80s, I did this one, and when I first started, I said, in Florida, they're teaching certain dolphins how to speak, and uh, Mark Duper's up to full sense. <laughs> and uh, he was, you know, African-American wide receiver for the uh, dolphins. And the guy said, do it with Dan Marino. I go, I go uh, I'm not doing the joke with Dan Marino. <laughs> Why? It doesn't work with Dan Marino. He's very articulate. Do you get it? <laughs> it's teaching a guy how to speak. The guy can't put two fucking words together. <laughs> and uh, I'm not, he wanted me to try it with Dan Marino. I said, you try it with Dan Marino. I'm not going to bomb up there. And, uh, you know, then me and Esty got into a wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> She's tough. Artie, try it with Dan Marino. And then get up. Louis here. <laughs> <laughs> Move over. I tell you, you know, I, I've been there a long time. You see, Ben will back me up on this. If Ben was there, he would have defended me. I'm sitting there talking to Esty. We're having a wonderful conversation. He looks, she, she looks over my shoulder, and she goes, Louis here. She goes, get up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I pulled a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get out of there. <laughs> It would, it's it, funny. It's a. It's a. You know. You get a different uh, thing oh, depending on who's who's in there. You know. No, absolutely. Once in a while, I'm the big shot in there. Not yeah, often, uh, it's but a, it's different than when I'm. You know. Now, what do you do? You when I'm seventh on the list. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I gotta go find I, well, a seat no, over you know in the front. No, what sucks is when you hear like uh, guy code is here. <laughs> <laughs> who's here? Guy code. <laughs> guy code. 
I'm getting up for guy code. I was like, who are? I, I didn't know who any of those dudes were. <laughs> Me neither. I like but those, they all those have, guys. Well, they, are good though. well, they go on tour. They all have three minutes. Eighty four of them got to go on tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they're nice guys though. Like, uh, uh, I'm talking about the chicks. Uh, oh, Schultz. I don't. Yeah, I don't know a lot of them. Oh, is that, they would be on girl code. The guys. They're both. They they they, they cross the over. The girls are on guy code. Or the they guys cross are on girl over, code. which is very smart. <laughs> That's what Fantasy <laughs> Island and Love Boat would have done. That would have been. <laughs> they waited too long. To <laughs> Tonight on Fantasy Island, Gopher. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. Peter Dinklage has tattoo. <laughs> yeah. yeah Peter Dinklage well, would have killed on that tattoo. He would have been so much better. Yeah. I argue it's all material with actors, like. If if Marlon Brando was Skipper on uh, at Gilligan's Island, would he have done that much better than that guy? Uh, <laughs> it's all about material. Uh, it is. It's about the script. What's Brando going to do with that? Gilligan, little buddy. Uh, listen, <laughs> Gilligan, little buddy. Do me a favor. Gilligan, you little <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> listen, do me a favor. Did you tell the professor that uh, I'm gonna, I got to talk to him and, uh, and send Ginger in. <laughs> listen, look. Tell the Howells we're gonna need uh, uh, some more cash. <laughs> Tell the Howells we need more cash. <laughs> and uh, it's Marion's wedding. I can't turn. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Can't turn down anybody on Marion's wedding. The day of my, uh, the day of Marion's wedding. I understand two astronauts. You'll come to me with these, with these coconuts. I I can't refuse you the make coconuts. A, you make a radio. I understand you made a radio out of coconut. <laughs> now, uh, do you have that technology? <laughs> also, who do I see about getting another shirt? I have one blue shirt. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, can I get pants that go down to my ankles? <laughs> I want you to take this package to the other side of the island. I understand. I understand two astronauts. Two astronauts crashed in the lagoon. Uh, yeah, Gilligan, stay the fuck away from them. We want to get, we want to get out of here. <laughs> Quite frankly, Gilligan, you become an embarrassment. <laughs> Gilligan's like Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the way I wanted it. <laughs> I was I'm, I'm the assistant professor and I was looked over. <laughs> the way the skipper wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> Gilligan, the Gilligan Godfather. <laughs> What was that, that guy? Uh, God Gilligan. The guy Fred Travellino, the, 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 the Precious, did a bit where if, uh, uh, Paul Lind was Fredo. And uh, someone, <laughs> said, someone said to him, why did the dad look you over? He goes, I don't know. I guess I'm just different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just different. <laughs> I was watching that the other day when, uh, when Diane Keaton tells her. Uh, Tells Pacino she had an, uh, an abortion. He, Pacino really hits her. I mean, he. he I mean, yes. how how does she not yes. get hit there? Oh, it's a very real hit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And she then she went right into looking for Mr. Goodbar after that. That was a, <laughs> was a rough year. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly you're a movie guy. You know, like, I do. I like. Shit, well, I like the seventies movies. I enjoy. I think that was the best era for films. I do. That you was watch. There. You go to movies now. You watch a lot of movies I, now. I can't go. Danny goes to everything. I can't go. I don't go out to them. You know? I don't like it. I don't, I don't well, like. I still it. watch them a lot. Because what if, if I'm sitting there and the guy code comes and I gotta get up? <laughs> SD comes. What if just I know she follows me around? <laughs> she follows me around everywhere get I go. Up. Are you in the diner? She, <laughs> she calls my cell phone. Where are you? Are you at the Yankee game? Get up! <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Schultz is coming. <laughs> How great is the cellar, though? Like it is fun. Whenever is you fun. go out on the road, he's just like, "Oh, can we get back to the cellar?" Uh, no, it is very. It's a lot of fun. You have chats like this. this is what we do for a living. <laughs> and uh, every once in a while, a chick at the bar hangs a curve over the plate, and she, you jerk it out of the park. <laughs> uh, a lot of times, you got a slide you can't touch. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know, and, and, and that's the is you know, I I love teasing. She is such a they're they're my family. They're they're like whatever. You know, you don't have this problem. I have a lot of demons. Whenever I've had to leave for jail or mental homes or rehab, and I come back, I don't feel like I'm officially back in show business until I go to the cellar. And, uh, you know, Manny and uh, Gnome's Kid, man, it, just the whole, like, uh, history of it. And what a successful, they're doing something right. Like, what a success. And they sell out. They open up a new club and sell out. You know, they got the Midas touch. You they've know? done it right, man. They really have. For the record, you said Gnome's Kid Manny. I think you I should did. go back and say Manny's I Kid I thought gnome. I said, well, yeah, okay, you're right. You know what it is? It's, I'm it's, sitting here debating. Should I say something? It's the, you know what? It's the Ritalin. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, I, I do love that place. I, I, do. I do too, man. It's very, 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 it's, it's fun. And it does make you feel like you're back, you're in the game when you're yeah. feeling like you're not. Right, and it, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, that fan ain't passing there. Let me put it to you that way. 
<laughs> it's got a quality about it. You got to get in. You know, right. No matter right. what. It's funny. I was just in L.A. at the Comedy Store, which is where I started. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. And somebody told you me. You went there first. Well, let's get into the history. Ben, ben, okay, Ben, you know, you auditioned for Cash Cab. I did, yeah. Where, which you beat out a lot of guys. And uh, just perfect for that job. Just so so great. A great host. And, Thanks, man. Uh, you know, yeah. And, and uh, you know, again, to show you the popularity of it, about three years ago, uh, I'm with my uncle, yeah, my uncle and, and my, my cousin, and uh, over the over the back of over my shoulder, they see uh, Louis C.K. They say, "Get up!" No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no they saw Ben Cash Camp. They went, "Well, Ben Cash Camp." They're like, "There's no Elvis." And uh, I said, uh, "They said, you know, knowing uh, I do comedy, I said I, I kind of know Ben. He's a really nice guy." I said, "I'll go, we'll go say hi." I go, "Maybe you know, I don't know. It's a long shot. Maybe let's be." And I went over and said hi to you, and he couldn't have been cooler. He goes, "Yeah, we'll finish this, and we'll just pretend like you're hailing a cab." <laughs> <laughs> and Mike, they could not believe it. They were calling, you know, their wives and uh, their goomads. That was fun. That was a great ride, man. So we we won twenty two hundred dollars. I mean, how often does that happen? But the great thing is, Colin Quinn was our, you know, uh, a savior. What shout out, yeah. yeah, shout out. No, he didn't save you, man. He missed it. He's the one. He's the only <laughs> question we got wrong. He's the only one he got wrong. He had to call me. It's, it's, it's Mr. Stony Brook. <laughs> I know he's he's the smartest one of the smartest guys I know, and he got it right. But just just over the question was what a building in Washington has a, an underground labyrinth, like a maze where you can get away. And you know, I thought the Pentagon blah, blah, and Colin got it, which was Congress. But he just yeah, you're right. He missed the missed time. It. Yeah, it was just after. That's but right. we answered all the almost every other question. We won twenty two hundred bucks, and uh, they were ecstatic. And, <laughs> that was great. Uh, when it aired, it was like a really like we had a, they had a party. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on twenty two TV shows, never one party. There's a guy who comes into the cellar once in a while who was on Cash Cab, yeah. and he lost. And then they told him it was going to be on, right? And he had his whole family. <laughs> that sucks, man. And it wasn't on. Oh, uh, and he, he shows up at the cellar once it's in like a while. Getting he bumped. just sits there and looks at me. <laughs> it's, like getting, it's like getting bumped at your own house. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with that. I, here's well, the number you could call this the production company. I, when I was doing the Norm Show sitcom on ABC, it was the most mainstream thing I ever did. They let me do Hollywood Square. And I said, I have to do a week there because. You did Hollywood Square? Yeah, I said, That's I have awesome. to do it. It's the only thing my grandmother bragged about that I ever did. <laughs> Artie's on Hollywood Square. Yeah. I'm not permanent. I'm like, I'm whoopee. <laughs> I got every, ben, every question wrong. Everyone wrong? All week. Every question wrong. <laughs> Finally, I just tried to be like an old school comic. Every question I said, my my wife. <laughs> but the way I cost this woman about 10 grand at the end was so terrible. Tom Bergeron says, who, this woman, $10,000. And I'll take Artie to win, okay? oh. which I never felt more pressure in my life after that sentence. I'll take Artie to win. Never in my life. <laughs> so she, she. Uh, the question is, who did Bill Clinton say was his uh, favorite person in the history of the 20, uh, 21st century? Uh, and I was saying, well, I know it's not Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, so I said, uh, I was such a motherfucker. I said, listen, sweetie, I just saw him interviewed. I just saw this interview today. There's no way I'm wrong. It's 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 Gandhi. I, I said no. It's uh, JFK. <laughs> it's JFK. I just saw it. She goes, "You saw an interview?" Yeah. Well, if you saw the interview, I'll go with him. And he went, "Ugh, Gandhi." <laughs> oh, <laughs> it got an audible boo. An audible like, boo. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But that's the idea, right? Yeah. And since then, Bruce Lynch has not returned a call. <laughs> 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 Funniest line ever on the road. Uh, Nick DiPaolo and Colin Quinn go in. They're doing a gig in Albany. They go to La Quinta Inn in a room that hadn't been washed, and it was disgusting. And Colin said, "It smells like Bruce Valance tried to kick coke for two weeks." In here. <laughs> <laughs> Could that be more descriptive? La Quinta. But so, so Ben, you know, really made a mark. You look back, you go, "There's no one who could have been better at that job." You know, it's like really great. Oh, and so nice. you were saying that's the comedy nice. store. So you're from New Jersey. You went out to the to LA first. First, I went to L.A. I like threw it all in. I what year is this? This is 93. Okay. I just like sold a bunch of stuff and was like, I'm moving to L.A. Right, I'm going right. to try to get into movies. I want to work in movies in Why some not? capacity. Yep. I'm like, yeah, I know this is cliche. There's a million kids doing this right now. Well, but so now were you doing stand-up at that time? I hadn't done stand-up yeah. yet. I That's fell good... into doing stand-up. I got a job at the comedy store. Yeah. Oh, were you like a doorman or something? I, was, uh, I answered the phones in the green okay. room. Okay. Well, why not? Was Mitzi still there at that Mitzi point? Mitzi was still there. Uh, was I did cool. bartend. I did work the door a little bit. Like, What was know. Mitzi like to work for that? Mitzi fired me <laughs> about, 
I don't know, about 50 times. Like the police say, you're not ready for the store. <laughs> but she, he would actually save me. Like she, oh, yeah. would fi- she just kind of had this phase where she was kind of firing everybody. Oh, really? She's walking around. Well, she's starting to lose it. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. And Paulie would be like, come on, Ma. He doesn't, he's, you know, he didn't, like I didn't put the candles out at the outside bar. <laughs> God, she's like, fun. where are the candles? Oh. And I was like, uh, and I was filling in. I didn't even know about the candles. Right. I'm like, I didn't know other candles. And she's like, you're fired. Oh, my God. Don't come back. And uh, how did she do with your Paul was behind her, like <laughs> cleaning up. Like, oh, yeah. Like, don't, you're not fired. Come, we need you tomorrow. <laughs> We're oh. shorthanded as it is. Well, that's know. hilarious. I mean, because he, you know, it, 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 again, what was he like to, to hang with? I mean, in that capacity, was he like, oh, he was all right, man. He was yeah. like a, just kind of a nice guy, you know? He right. Wasn't, he didn't have an attitude or, right. Know, he was just well, cool. So, with the, was he in that character a lot? Was he the weasel? He was sort of like half weasel. <laughs> 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 he was weed. He, he was weed. He was, you know, he was like sort of in the character, but I'm not the like way, completely. I'm the way. <laughs> I'm the way. I remember he was on uh, Molly. He was on Howard. Yeah, and, right. Well, he's been there a few times. When I was there, he's on a few times. And Howard was like, well, st- "Stop doing, right. stop doing the character. Just just, shut up. Why don't you just talk? You got the money, though." And then Paulie was like, "Okay." And <laughs> Howard was like, "I can't believe you just gave up your whole fucking character <laughs> because I told you to. What the hell's wrong with you?" I know. It's like, you know, we'll go back to that. <laughs> go back to that. But Paulie was always nice to me. Yeah. He he, he uh, again he he. There's different stories. Again, he was always sort of nice to me, I guess. He brought me a cupcake once. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I, I mean, something crazy. Yeah. He's brought Yo, me a cupcake. You remind yeah, me of cupcake. a cupcake. Brought you a cupcake. He just did a Showtime special in Washington. It was a political. Paul, he's, a weasel is uh, a political. That was like the name of it. And this was huh. the big joke. This was the closure. <laughs> Osama rhymes with Obama. <laughs> Did anybody notice Osama rhymes with Obama? <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. There's a crowd just going crazy. <laughs> yeah, at that. yeah, crazy. Like, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> they kept saying, wait a minute. That's right. We never, we never yeah, realized we never that. <laughs> He's going up to cops. Yo, dude, check that out. There's a clue, dude. There's a clue. I'm giving. I'm breaking you off a chunk. I'm giving you a tasty nug of information, dude. That's a. That's a frighteningly good Paulie I know, that you I know. Did, man. <laughs> <laughs> he told me I wasn't ready for the store once. That's what he told me. I so said, I you, started there. Yeah. Well, and, that's great. Uh, so that, that's a hard place to. And, then and how that was you, the first room I was ever passed at. Did you do the belly room first? I did the belly room first, and then I had an audition in the OR for Mitzi. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She was like, You're funny. You can work. <laughs> and that was it. But then I was passed. But then I moved home uh-huh. uh, to Jersey. Right. Moved back home. I figured I was going to do stand up. So then I started going into New York. Okay. Um, but I was just out there, and so I guess Louis taped a special there like uh-huh. a year ago. He did, or right? Exactly. Yeah. And they said uh, that he was talking. I, I don't know if it's on the special or if he was just talking to some guys before. He said, because that's the first place he ever did stand up. Right. He Going in there now, even now, he gets nervous. Oh, I, that, that makes sense. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, it's so. Oh, it, right. 100% true for me too. Absolutely. Going back in there, I still feel like I did the you know the first time. All like well, that's sweating. why if the, if you do an activity with uh, something the first time, you know anything you relate to, you still get nervous. You know, mm. like if it's the further. That's why I always get nervous when I, I fuck a 300 pound Puerto Rican chain. Like, <laughs> no. Because I say I'm going right back to day one. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a? And I say to them, I, do you have a tattoo of your dead brother on your neck? Because then I can't do this. <laughs> that's what the first one was. And she broke my heart. Drug mule. True story. The chick I lost my virginity to was a, it became a drug mule. And um, I wanted to write a movie called My Version of Serendipity where uh, years later I'm doing a line of coke and I realized it came out of her ass. Oh, God. <laughs> she shit it. Like through some magical thing. I go, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Alejandro? <laughs> Is that the scent of Alejandro? <laughs> I know it was in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that can only be Alejandro then. And then she's somewhere like, you know, at gunpoint in the Best Western. Oh, God. And she gets like a tingle in her ass. Goes, Whoa, is that you out there? You owe me 50 bucks? <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's intimidating to get up at the comedy store. I mean, that, cause yeah. I, I, they wanted me to go to the belly room. I was, on, I was on a show. I was a regular at a bunch of clubs in New York, and I got, I got chosen to go to uh, L.A. with a job on a network show. Still intimidated, still hard. They wanted me to go to the belly room, and I thought it was a fat joke. I said, all right, whatever. <laughs> Not going to the belly room. Ha ha. 
but it's like a real upstairs. It's a real and it's, room upstairs. There's yeah. ghosts of Richard Pryor. There, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man, it's an intimidating the place room. Place is crazy. Yeah. You just sort of went. That's. That's great that you did it that way. You know? That's the first place. The belly room is the first place I ever did a spot. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, yeah. I got a laugh. I said, um, I was really nervous coming up here, but then I remembered from the Brady Bunch to just picture everyone in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the first thing I ever said on stage. Oh, that Marshall Jan is right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And I was like, so, you know, like some big fat guy. I was like, you look great in those panties or something. <laughs> and got, and got a, la- a little bit of a laugh. Right, right, right. And Im- I, immediately I was like, oh, my God. Go with that. That's this that, is what does I'm that doing. feel good? That yeah. feels so great. I felt man. like I was home, you know? When well, I got a laugh, I was like, oh, this is, that, this is it. The best yeah. feeling ever. Yeah. The best feeling so ever. So lucky, yeah. looking back, that all these little things happened the way they did. Right. That put me in that spot. Yeah. I never would have, like, sought it out. Everything goes back to that last, you know, you, you feel like uh, you'll never forget that last spot. You know, that, <laughs> first, that first spot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard when it takes a while. Some people like Seinfeld said he was funny for the first time he got up there it's not hard to believe uh that anybody is but because uh, it's so it's so it's such an odd thing to do like get up in front of strangers yeah. and say because you're already telling me you already have an arrogant attitude like i think not only do i think what i have to say is funny and interesting i think you'll overpay for drinks to hear it you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially what we're saying look at yeah. the look at a club like the conversation or, or any club they they make people wait in the rain or and, and they get in there they the cover charge is usually overcharged they pay 14 bucks for a bottle of rolling rock you got to buy two of them for you and the fucking broad you're with or whatever i apologize <laughs> and uh, if you're in your safe space i apologize i uh and and the only reason they get away with that, Ben, is because we're funny. That's the only reason they get away with it. It's because you can make the laughs. Man. Right. That's it. And, uh, laugh and forget about this shit that ever, sucks in their life. Well, yeah. Did you ever deal with Lucian at uh, the comic strip? Oh, I knew Lucian. Yeah. He, he, right. he, uh, you know, he, he was, was at, harsh. Man. I need a laugh from you every 11 seconds. Yeah. So, so what the fuck is that? What Jesus? <laughs> You go into that little closet oh, in the I front know. and have his discuss. You know your chat fail, about your act. I failed like four times. He goes, "I already have a fat Italian guy." I go, "Here or at home?" <laughs> <laughs> is, is he decomposing you in a drum? Let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Get a new one. Yeah, exactly. No, he but said he, to me, "He goes, uh, he goes, he was harsh. You have a you have a very funny act, Ben, but uh, <laughs> anyone could do it." <laughs> that, yeah, that's what he was like. He's like, but I am doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I, 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 again, I burn a lot of birds. I have a lot of anger. What are you so angry about, man? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, just, I could have, I could have, I could be in better shape, quite frankly. But I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Physical shape? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have lupus. AIDS. <laughs> I don't know why I, I said it loud to a little bit. Edge. Dude, I went to uh, I went to Amsterdam. Oh, me too. They came around. Remember, they came around. They were like, "We're doing a tour. We're gonna bring all these New York comics to Holland." Oh no, I didn't do that. But I know uh, I did Edinburgh once. I never did that. Yeah. And I went. So I went to. Uh, that must have been fun. It was fun, man. I yeah. was there for a while. And Lucian Vanessa was on the tour, so right. Lucian was there. And I, I don't know if you noticed when you were there, but Dutch people are giants oh they are big they're yeah. so tall i'm six foot six yeah. at least i used to be <laughs> i know absolutely and i would see at least one woman every day in holland that was as tall as i am i need a step ladder and, to kiss, and, a step ladder to kiss a whore and 10 <laughs> 10 guys that were t- they're, they're way huge. taller than me they're like hitler, the tallest hitler people youth, around hitler youth so god you know godfrey yeah godfrey and i Black keep kid. like laughing about how tall these dutch guys are right, they're all like godfrey's, six foot ten fun to hang out with and skinny <laughs> and gangly and it, so yeah. we're, and lucian the whole time will not admit it right he's like i don't know why you keep making big deal out of how tall these people are they're, <laughs> we're, they're no taller than anybody else we're not as smart as you i'm like lucian they're the tallest people <laughs> in the world while we're talking to him these giant dudes are just walking by so like two years go by yeah. after that tour I'm at I'm up at the comic strip. Yeah. And we're talking about this how the Dutch people are so tall and Lucian would never <laughs> acknowledge it. Right. And I'm calling him out. I've like a little further along in my career and I'm ready I, I'm You're more willing confident. to challenge him That's, on yeah, shit sure. instead of just why not? sitting quietly so I don't lose my spots. Right. And I go, Lucian, I don't know why you wouldn't acknowledge it. There was just giant Dutch dudes all over the place. <laughs> and you kept saying, Oh no, no, no. <laughs> And so while we're talking, this dude comes in the front door of the comic strip, yeah. and he's so tall he has to duck to get through the door, oh, the front wow. door of the club. And I go, look, here's a giant Dutchman right now 
<laughs> as a joke. Perfect. Here's a giant Dutchman right now to prove my point. That's perfect. And the guy comes up and I go, are you from Holland? And he goes, how did you know? Get out of <laughs> I here. I swear to God. Oh, that's almost like you're pay- <laughs> like Moments like that, they're not. That's amazing. It's like uh, no, in mom- the Woody Allen movie when they're in the line. Marshall McLuhan. And they're <laughs> he's I the happen director's to have you, I happen to have a huge Dutchman right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, he can uh, attest. I have yeah. a living so example. That's a, you know what's great about what you just said there? <laughs> Lucian was like that guy who was being on the line who was pontificating. Like, he, yeah, he was yeah like, exactly. He knew a lot about everything. And you know what? I forget the kid's name. He wasn't around long, but a black comic used to call him Lotion. Lotion. And, <laughs> oh, it used to make, and he pissed him off so bad. He's going, Lotion, man. Like, like, <laughs> like trying to be overly friendly. Like, Lotion. That's and, my man, Lotion. Oh, yeah. how great is that Lotion? <laughs> uh, you know, I and uh, you, you'll laugh at this now because I have a, a story about a big Dutchman. I was in Amsterdam uh, for a, a friend's bachelor party, and I was it was at the height of my drug use, and I, I was in withdrawals, and I went to the red, red light district. I got a whore, not for not a lot of money. She was like an Arizona nine. I mean, you know, like eighty bucks, uh, and I, <laughs> an Arizona sh- nine. shekels, whatever that was. Yeah, yeah bit, very pretty. So that's good. Uh, and yeah, very, very pretty. <laughs> and Arizona, I was like, I didn't know Arizona had its own Arizona, scale. Uh, well, you know, for me it does because I'm, you know, a whoremonger. <laughs> and I, uh, and I, and she, she actually showed me around. She knew more than the tour guide. I called her whore guide. It's in my book. I copyrighted that. I made no money with it. But I, I uh, she, she, she goes back to the, my hotel room. We're crushing up oxycodone all weekend. And it was the, I didn't go to my friend's bachelor party because who cares? I was with this whore. Oh, God. I was with this hot chick. She had drugs. <laughs> and uh, I was like, it was a great time. If you young kids are listening, that's not a great time. You should <laughs> you should work out. There's nothing fun about that. You should that. Get, get some kale and work out. But uh, I uh, so we go on. We're in the my, we're in a dark room. I'm in I'm in another country. I've never been there. I'm in a dark kitchen doing oxycodone with a whore. And I said, let's get out. You know, let's get out and be positive today. We were together for two days, and, uh, and I'm on the meter by the way. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so she said, this lunch is on me. Uh, we go out and we get one of those. <laughs> like, yeah, we, sure it is. <laughs> we, we go out in the canal and we get in the canal and one of those things, a like, gondola, whatever the fuck. And we got what what you're talking about, a big blonde, like a uh, big fucking guy. And he knows he's giving the tour shit in his accent. And uh, he's looking around. He sees the Anne Frank house. And he goes, and that is the Anne Frank house. Very sad. Very sad what happens there. Very sad. Moment of silence. <laughs> he puts his head down. He puts his head down. And I guess he counts what's like an appropriate time. Right. And then he gets up, and I swear to God, he gets up and he has to go. And, and he points to the building next to the Anne and says, And that is a great place for pancakes. <laughs> 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 Well, you got over that quick, didn't you, <laughs> Gunther? Yeah, did, did, did the Frank family say, fuck, let's have some pancakes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that is highly a great place for me. Come on. Somebody had a great, when I was there, I had a great, I think it was a British guy, a great bit about the Anne Frank house. Like, I know, I know how they found it. There's a sign right out front. <laughs> <laughs> It's a sign in the front that lawn. That is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, th- th- there was, uh, this sort of happened. I got, uh, th- my cousin was over there. The other time I went, uh, again, another attempt at a bachelor party, and uh, we smoked this uh, hash before we went to the Ed Frank house. Big mistake. Do not smoke hash before you go through that. Because <laughs> my, my, my cousin, we, he was, we were giggling. Like, because the hash was so amazing. And we drank the hash oil, and we had an edible muffin, and all this shit. Like, Afghan Kush muffin. That's insane. And uh, he, he he basically said out loud, my, my cousin basically said, she has plenty of room. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> she had plenty of room. Like, what is she bitching about? Take the fucking stick out of your ass. That's what he said. <laughs> mm. and, and the only thing more uh, offensive is when I said AIDS. Listen, yeah. dude. Have you ever heard of uh, the Winchester Mystery House? No. There is this crazy place, man. The, <laughs> it sounds crazy. The uh, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, Winchester Rifles, right? Right. They that company made you know millions and millions and millions, hundred, probably hundreds of millions of dollars when that was like all the money killed in the world. a lot of engines. And uh, the guy Winchester died and left the fortune. Of Winchester right. Repeating Arms Corporation to his wife. Right. This is like in Ohio. Uh huh. She uh, went kind of crazy, <laughs> thinking that she was being haunted by the ghosts of people that had been killed by the guns. Oh my God. So she packs Uh-oh. up from Ohio. <laughs> 
and she moves to uh, Sa- San Jose. Okay. And she has so much money that she just keeps adding on to this house so uh, that she can hide from the ghosts. Oh, my God. Right? So she built this boy, house that boy, looks build, like a the, maze. God, the builders were happy. <laughs> they, she had a full... T- yeah, yeah. She had a crew of like, f- you know, I Con- think it's 16 guys or something that just worked con- continuously. Construction workers dressing up like ghosts. <laughs> so, uh, you know Brian Scalero? You know, uh, I know comic. that name, yeah. He's a comic funny dude. Uh, right. He came along and, we, and was uh, working with me that weekend and... Uh, I had played in this like celebrity golf tournament thing, right? And I got a gift bag that had a Johnny Rockets platinum card in it, uh-huh. which I later found out meant that I could take as many people as I wanted, right? Go to any Gen- Johnny I, Rockets anywhere. I have a black card and eat anything, oh, uh, whatever we wanted for as long stu- as we want. Like, it was like it was ridiculous. <laughs> so Brian comes with me, and we're we're, we're doing this gig, and we're la- we're thinking about going to the mystery house. We, so we go to we go to Johnny Rockets. <laughs> we go to Johnny Rockets and we eat everything we can eat everything. for like an hour and a half. That's great. I show the platinum card and they're like, oh, they're, everyone wants to come and look and see who the guy is has a platinum card. That's great. They bring us all the fast food we can eat for like ninety minutes, and then we go to the Winchester Mystery House. It has like sixty seven rooms in it, and oh. we farted. <laughs> <laughs> we farted in every uh, single fucking room of that place. It was awful. We, were like, like, we, we should not be in these tiny yeah. little rooms with, these, with this tour. It was like, yeah, what the fuck? Ghost with gas. <laughs> oh, it's, it's unbelievable. That is, that's fantastic. There's so many. I couldn't fun. help but think of that when you're talking no, there's about. So many it. You guys funny, are all there's so many up funny up layers to that story. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Yeah, I tried to get the platinum card uh, for Johnny Rock, and they told me they they. They couldn't put it. Uh, they started losing money with it after the, the festival the year before, uh, with the guy who won it. And I said, "Oh, that's." And then I, uh, Ralphie May, last year. <laughs> <laughs> Ralphie May put Johnny Rockets out of business. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I think at the comic strip, I think I was the one. I single handedly remember uh, in the early nineties, comics. If you had a spot at the comic strip, you drank for free. <laughs> oh, and God. I would have like a, yeah. when I first passed, I'd have like a Monday night at eleven thirty. And then I would uh, get my fifteen dollars, and then I would sit at the and drink uh, all the absolute they had, <laughs> and like with shots of Cuervo, and um, uh, I I think they Lucian was breaking even <laughs> with a comedy club. <laughs> he said, "All right, listen, you can't do this anymore," and no no comic could then drink. Um, that was a nice. Yeah, you get so, ha- you get like one beer. So when did you when you move to uh, Cash Cab? Obviously, is based in New York. Did you move to New York because of that? No, no. I I I only lived in L.A. for about six months. Okay. I started doing stand up. Figured out that's what I wanted. to so do. So all that happened in six months at the st- at the comedy store. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, then I moved home and started doing it in New York. When I first met Mitchie Shore, I realized that Louis Anderson is doing an impression of her. That they they sound exactly the same. They sound a lot alike. Oh my god! They <laughs> don't. He just won an Emmy for what? For playing Zach's mom. Is he on oh, Zach's Louis show? Louis Anderson. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Did, did did Louis Anderson make the big announcement ever in his life? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I think so. I think Let's it's in on. one of his books. <laughs> Let me get that book. <laughs> no, the, the, there's a great story. A, a disc jockey sent this to us, and Howard, um, he called um, Rodney Dangerfield, and Rodney Dangerfield thought it was Louis Anderson. It was a terrible impression, but Rodney was out of it. It was towards the end of his life. Right. And this was touching, too, because Rodney was such a nice guy. He helped, helped a lot of comics, I heard. And Louis, he, this kid does a bad, a Kansas City disc jockey. Like, hey, we're going to call. Like, he went, we're going to call. We got Rodney's number, man. And we're going to call his Louis. I'm going to do my Louis impression. So literally, this is the kid's Louis impression. Hey, Rodney, it's Louis Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, it's Louis Anderson. Yeah, I just blew the five o'clock whistle. I'm back here at 23 minutes on the high side of 9 o'clock. I took a minute to make my uh, bladder gladder. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> That's perfect. I'm taking two kids to the uh, to the Green Day show. Uh, we're going to sing their anti-Trump song. And, uh, blah, 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 blah. That's and, a quintessential uh, DJ. That was <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? It's lover boy. You're going to blow the fat black whistle at 59 degrees. <laughs> and we got to got my character, uh, my character, a guy with the gout coming up. And I do a guy with the gout. It's a big story. And, so the Rod, uh, do they actually have Rodney on the phone? Call, they call Rodney up and they go, well, the kid. Louis, you, you, you sound, you sound he, so different. Well, he says, he goes, Louis, you sound like uh, Wolfman Jack. <laughs> <laughs> No, and he did. I'm, I'm exaggerating. He did a pretty good, but but, but Rodney fell for it. He goes, he thought it was Louis Anderson. He goes, uh, Rodney, it's Louis. I'm in Las Vegas and I'm drunk. And, and what is so touching about it, Rodney really is trying to help. 
Vegas, come on, get out of there, kid. You don't want to be there. You don't want to join. I've been depressed in Vegas. Come on, buddy. I'll pick you up at the airport. Like, he's being, like, really nice. And Louie goes, oh, you know, I can't, I'm afraid of the uh, planes in Vegas. He goes, why? What's the matter? You fly all the time. He goes, uh, last time I was on the, the plane, uh, the, the stewardess, this beautiful woman tried to hit on me. And then there's a pause. And Ronnie goes, well, she's parking up the wrong tree there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For real, that actually happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! The kid hung up. And Ronnie never knew it wasn't Louis. <laughs> <laughs> never thought it wasn't Louis. Yeah, uh, Louis didn't know about it at all. No, I until didn't, now. Well, Louis, I, it's funny. I just saw a picture of him, and he looks a little feminine. He does look. Uh, he played Zach Galifianakis' mother. Yeah, he uh, plays his mom on the show. Um, that's great. I've never seen. It. I would love to see it. He's I, great, dude. Louis, Baskets. great. And he just it's a won, funny show. What's it called? Yeah. Baskets. No Baskets, kidding. yeah, that's no right. No kidding. Yeah. Is that like basket cases or something? What does that mean, baskets? I'm not I, certain. I, I think uh, it's I, the name of the clown. Well, I got oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, right. Zach's clown's oh, he's a a character. Clown. He's a clown, he's yeah. A clown. Oh, okay. And that's the clown's name, Baskets. That's right, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I, uh, yeah, he's I, like a clown who studied. He went to clown school in France uh, but failed out. And <laughs> no one takes him seriously as a clown. <laughs> that's the, Louis, the Jerry Lewis School of Clowning <laughs> in France. <laughs> I uh, no, th- th- again, Louis was a uh, what a what a great comic. Th- his first couple specials on Showtime were really hilarious. He's but hilarious, man. I did um, I did that show he used to host. That uh, the first time I ever did stand up on TV was that show on NBC after uh, SNL that he hosted, where five comics would come on. So Bobby Slayton is before me, and they told me you got to do eight minutes on the button. So I'm at my fucking hotel like some dweeb, uh, you know, uh, fucking rookie. Timing out exactly eight minutes, right? And I've done the road with these jokes. I I know the fucking amount of laughter. It's the most regimented I've ever been in my life. And uh, Bobby Slade, you know, goes on. There's a loose forty five minutes. Of <laughs> <laughs> Crowd work. What are you doing? You're fag, man. Who are you fag in front of? Him? You're fucking fag in front of. Him. He is the pit bull of comedy. He is. He's great. But I'm like, I had my girlfriend. I introduced my girlfriend to him in Las Vegas. I, I said, this is my girlfriend, Bobby. And he went, how you doing, sweetie? And he looks at me and goes, hey, do you want to go to Hooters Casino you know, and do some coke? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Bob, let's take this again. This is my girlfriend. <laughs> how you doing, sweetie? Want to go to the Hooters Casino you know, and do some coke? <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that sentence is I'm going to think is a no. <laughs> There's not one positive yes in there. Uh, and uh, so I get up there, and Louis is very depressed in between the takes. And he seemed drunk. He had a lot of booze on his breath. Of course, it could have been my breath. But uh, he was, he was, he, 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 it was sad, you know, because I was a fan of his. So I do, I do my act, and I do very well, and I'm very happy. But I looked down, seven minutes and 30 seconds. I figured, no, let the 30 seconds go. The guy goes, no, we need 30 seconds from you. So I never, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a joke. So this is what I said on television. I never did this joke before or since. I said, um, my trainer told me to treat my body like a temple, and the problem is I'm a Nazi. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, I'm going through my own private crystal knock, <laughs> which made it worse. Okay, dead, Quiet, dead, dead silence. <laughs> Matter of fact, oh, not only dead silence, you can hear Bobby Slayton coughing in the back, asking for his check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but now, what is this? Hey, grand? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you can hear the hatred. Like not only is dead silence, you can hear people organizing, like uh, the, the 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 townspeople would come burn me, <laughs> they come and chase okay. you out of I, town. I, I, I don't know. What, I don't know what made me think I, on the planet. I said maybe that's a joke somewhere there. I never did on television. I debuted it. <laughs> And I haven't done it since. I, this is the first time I've done it since. Sometimes you don't say the the, the exact thing you would I said not to tempt. Yeah. Dude, I did this. I did so, so, episode, but, but, uh, but listen, this, oh, okay, this okay, is how this ends. Okay, dead silence. And then all you hear after like what seems like a year of silence. Arnie Lane! <laughs> <laughs> he comes out, he goes, listen, Arnie, that was, there's applause. He goes, that was great. <laughs> Fake smile, plastic. <laughs> that was great. Listen, that last thing, we'll just cut that out. That's something <laughs> that happens all the time. We'll cut that out. The guy goes, and we're out. The camera's off and Lou goes, and <laughs> Puts his head down, pouting, and just walks away from me. I tried to shake his hand. I, I never saw him again. <laughs> he promised me he'd cut it out. Okay, cut to like eight months later, it airs. Uh, it, might have been call, it might as well have been called the Bobby Slayton special. <laughs> Uh, they, 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 they air my stuff. They air my stuff. One joke I did that killed early on, they didn't do because they were offended by it because I had to do with drinking and driving. And so they cut that. 
to and make time for that, they keep the for the last joke. Oh. They didn't even like move it around to where can you can you put it over there so I don't bomb with the last? so <laughs> so I tell everybody to watch. I destroy for seven and a half minutes. I tell that joke and bomb. All I all anybody I know goes, we're sorry. <laughs> everybody calls me up and goes, my age like this is bad, dude. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I go what they didn't see I'm scared was, but what's with the fucking anti-Semitic I didn't, they cut the joke for drinking and driving they left in like I'm fucking Goebbels they left it at the end <laughs> what are you, you're making a joke about how you're treating yourself anyway <laughs> I know it's my body's a temple and I crystal knock <laughs> <laughs> you know where they broke all the glasses and started to kill the Jews you know that <laughs> that didn't go over with <laughs> Bobby Slate <Jesus>. coughing <laughs> Co Bobby Slate calling everyone the first row fag <laughs> yeah, that's fine <laughs> That's fine. Pretending that, that grabbing a guy's wife's head and pr making it like she's blowing him. That's in. That's in. That's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> what year was this? This is the first time I ever did stand up on TV. Ninety four, whatever uh, it is. And and, uh, and and then things were different then. Still, well, very yeah, different from now, right? Right. Well, I guess Auschwitz has always been a thing. But I, yeah, that, <laughs> that's still still now. From day fucking <laughs> it would not one, not be an acceptable. But, I, 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 but the, the, the but funny, like some of the stuff that Bobby was getting away with, probably, yeah, well, it wouldn't fun, fly now. And the funniest thing ever is, Louis, Louis, Artie Lang, <laughs> Artie Lang, everybody. The as soon I felt so bad. As soon as the lights are off, he just mm. <laughs> <laughs> just like a robot. We'll cut that out. Sure. You were great. Such energy, such energy, <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> 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 his head just his leg goes limp. Um. <laughs> don't worry, I said to him, "Don't worry." Fifteen years, Zach Galvanos is going to get a show. You're going to play tomorrow. <laughs> you could win an Emmy. And yeah, and you, you and Jeffrey Tambor are going to win Emmys for playing broads. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these shows on now with political correctness, like Netflix is up under the radar that these like Jeffrey Tambor with the trans was that trans America, right? right yeah, right. or transparent. Now, what do you do when you do you have a? I feel like did you just tell me you had a deal somewhere or something? Like what what's going on with you? Uh, I'm launching a web platform. It's already launched, but That's it's got a great. whole bunch of stuff on it. It's got a new stand up special. It's just my website, therealbenbailey.com. That's awesome. Now, what do you find that for, that must be great to do? Yeah, I, that so I, far I've it's always good. loved it feels good, I've always loved your stand up. Ben has always made oh, me thanks, laugh. Artie. Yeah, no, you really you're one of those guys. You're just a funny guy, man. I, I, I th that's why well, my uncle and Connie said, "Yeah, he's a nice guy. Maybe he'll like immediate. Maybe he'll give us a lift. Well, like immediate, <laughs> but like immediate acceptance. Like I got them on a TV show in a second, and I said, I don't want to hear you guys bitch about anything ever again, <laughs> <laughs> ever again." How about a fucking uh, you know? Uh, no, I'm not bringing a gift Thanksgiving. You're on cash cab, <laughs> and I let them. I let them out of twenty two hundred. Well, yeah, what the hell? That's the kind of guy I am. You let them keep it. I said, split it. What do I give a shit? I'm magnanimous. I was getting That's some good. blood work back. I don't think I'd be around. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can split this unless yeah, watch, I live. Yeah, why don't you split it? I got uh, something's going to happen. And then I want my third. <laughs> I've got age. <laughs> I, 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 you, uh, so, I mean, but the freedom of a stand-up special like that, it must be great. To, it feels good, man. I like yeah. it's. A, it feels like a risk. Right. Like about a year ago, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of trying to sell stuff. Trying to convince people to worst? make the it's stuff I want to make. It's trying to get on a show old. that I don't have anything to do with the production of, or you know. Well, we have a, we have similar careers in the sense that you know we we uh, kicked the last on something that people know us for, and you know uh, we're we're we're, we're, uh, we're out there in the new world now where we're known, but you're adjusting still to this. Well, I'm dare you I say, find another place. Guy to fit code in. kind of world yeah. with technology, but what you're doing is like even with this podcast. I uh, I charge seven dollars a month. That's a quarter a day. A, a guy still bitch about it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that they get like two hour podcasts. Like, oh, you know, you're a little light on the podcast. Shut up. <laughs> Quarter a day, dick lick. They got a fucking uh, <laughs> uh, uh, thirty eight year old guy telling about a quarter a day. How emasculating! <laughs> what the fuck do you do? Then don't listen to me, dude. A buddy of mine had a garage sale. And uh, this, these people came. They show. I don't know if you ever had a garage sale, but if you <laughs> yeah, do, we did it when I left my old people house. People will yeah. show up, right? You say seven a.m. The people will be there at six. They're, they're a rare breed of waiting. people, and well, they my, come in. This woman comes in, yeah. and she's like looking around in his stuff. I can't remember what it was. It's like a set of coasters or something, <laughs> right? And it was he had it, he had it there for a dollar, and she was like, huh, "This a dollar?" <laughs> and uh, and he's like, "Yeah." Yeah, it's a dollar. Oh, There's a no. sticker right on it says a dollar. Oh, no. She's like, I don't know. A dollar. <laughs> she, goes, she goes, she goes, uh, how about 50 cents? Oh, 50 cents. And, he, and he's like, oh. <laughs> he goes, okay, okay 50 cents. <laughs> 
And she goes, how about no. a, I swear to God, she goes, she goes, how about a quarter? <laughs> he goes, no. Yeah, stop that. No. I'm stepping on I'm, I'm it. putting the fucking line down. <laughs> so then he, he's like, no, I, I, felt, I felt like such an asshole uh, that I didn't give up for another quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but it was principle. I'm like, it was the principle of the thing. Well, how about that? You just made me think of how pathetic it was if I if I send out a two-hour tape of a podcast and they go, quarter, how about 10 cents? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a nickel. <laughs> Pay my, whatever you like. My buddy had a garage show once, true story. He had out an old fungal bat. He used to ground with an Adirondack bat. And he forgot that on the back of it, his father had written, Puerto Rican be good stick. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And uh, he got like 10 bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> my neighbor went so bad. I had a garage take sale. They just took everything. People <laughs> stole shit. I'm like, did you just steal my wind chimes? <laughs> <laughs> I got a piss. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we'll be right back. I'm going to shut this door. You all right with that? Go right ahead, yeah. We're just telling stories about the... We're back, by the way. Uh, flying by with Ben <laughs> Bailey, an hour and three minutes. Already, you're not going to get this quality stuff. Uh, well, where are you going to go? Quarter a day. People. Yeah. Where are you going? To WTF? How about 50 cents? Uh. <laughs> Artie, I'll give you... I'll give you uh, I'm pretty sure I'm paying the kid to listen to the podcast. <laughs> I... Uh, we, he, we, you know what? Ben was just telling a great story about Colin Quinn's uh, first time he did stand up, and you know we'll leave it to Colin. I'll, when Colin's going to come in here, and I'll, I'll let him. I'll, they can listen to I'll, it. I'll actually. Remind them. Of, oh well, how? Yeah, on your podcast. On my podcast, it's and, all but true. It's called. How do they find that again? I find go, that again. Re, all but true. The real Ben Bailey dot com, and the podcast is called Tall But True. Like tall, tall but true. Oh, okay. They sound tall, but they are true. Right. I. Uh, well, a, a great Colin story. Yeah, he that, always he always makes stuff smarter, you know, Colin. He always smarten up a joke. Mm. I was with um, uh, me him and Nick DePaulo were on the, the road, and uh, politically correct college, George Washington University. <laughs> oh, and there's a, a, a blonde girl, cute young blonde girl, doing deaf language, you know, signs on the stage because it's a college, a sorority hired us, and she wanted to make sure deaf people could. Help. So I said, you know, I said, are there any deaf people here? And there weren't. I go, well, we don't need you. Why would we need you? There's no deaf people here. It's distracting. But she wouldn't go because it was a rule. So oh I, uh, I, she, she had to say every single thing I said she had to sign. So I said, you know what? How do you say pussy? And I swear to you, Ben, the way you say pussy for deaf is you make a triangle by your crotch. You made a triangle by your crotch. <laughs> I said, well, listen. I'm, I said, listen, I'm not a smart comic. I'm not a blink. I'm known as a smart comic. I'm uh, sort of a hacky dick joke guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Whereas a lot of people would look over it and try to better themselves and maybe go for a higher than the lowest common. Denominator. I'm gonna go for the lowest common. Denominator. <laughs> After every joke I told, which quite frankly didn't do well, I just said for no reason, for no reason at all, I said pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell the joke. She tells me this, and I don't go and, and, and pussy, <laughs> and pussy. <laughs> So this is like 45 minutes. Uh, and Colin was closing because, uh, of course, the comedy gods aren't going to let me close. And uh, Colin's closing. And he's watching all this. And uh, he uh, he goes out. And, of course, he does the smart version of what I did. First of all, I ended with, like, my ver my Rosalita. I said 50, 100 straight times. I said pussy. I said pussy 100 straight times. She kept on going, pussy, pussy. pussy. <laughs> she almost had an orgasm. She went like, like like she was doing TV, <laughs> like arm curls, <laughs> and she started to cr almost cry, which I enjoyed because the political correctness. I had to cure them of this. I said pussy a hundred times. She did it a hundred times, and they were disgusted with me. Then I left the stage. I left Colin like a hundred foot holder. <laughs> Colin's first joke. He bombs. Okay, he bombs. She signs it. Colin walks over to the woman, hits her on the head, and says, "Is this on?" <laughs> 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 now that's okay. You get me, then you get a smart guy. But here's how I ruin the moment. It's this. Song. Here's how I ruin the moment. As everyone's guffawing, as they die down with the lid, I, I run out and I say, Pussy! <laughs> <laughs> and then she does this, and uh, we almost didn't get paid. But, uh, is this on? That's a good one. That's a classic story. That's a good one. 
You would have to play with that. I mean, if <laughs> well, someone's what about, I, I said, signing exactly. on stage with you. Exactly. And I, I'm not exactly like, uh, you know, a young fucking George Carlin. And there's no deaf people in the crowd. No, there was no deaf people in the fucking crowd. Which I is said, a well, shame. You... It really would have been the funniest thing for them. I cut to this, though. <laughs> d- d- if there d- had well, been one there, they would have appreciated <laughs> exactly. it more than anybody. <laughs> exactly. Are you the one said pussy? They're like, they get up and be like, this show is vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying pussy? <laughs> And why am I I'm doing like I'm like the uh, bongo? Yeah. I'm like a deaf mongoloid there. Uh, <laughs> that's my new character. Are you like a deaf mongoloid? Can the can the gang deal with racism? Dan, what was that? People, the person, someone wrote an article. The deaf, the defamation, not yes. the defamation. It's not the defamation league. <laughs> it was a, it was a deaf. De- spelled D-E-A-F. It was a deaf online newsletter. Yeah, deaf online newsletter. Right. They, they, this is fifteen years ago. This happened, and they were they wanted me to like uh, be like protested. Because he told the story on the podcast last I, right, year. Right, I told the story on the podcast, and, right. and then they got mad at me. They, oh, this same story. Yeah, yeah. and they, they they wanted to protest because I did 15 years ago. They I wanted said, to protest your show? Yeah, yeah, because uh, she they heard that story and thought it was disgusting. And then a bunch of people were supposedly there. There's not even a deaf person. There's not uh, even a handicapped deaf person in the story. And, I know. And I the know. person had only heard it from someone else. Right. And, and then I said, my get, question, how did they the know? Jokes right. <laughs> right. No, I said, well, my yeah. question is, how did you hear it? Yeah, totally. How did you hear it? <laughs> Why are deaf did, people somebody, protesting well, audio? Say, how did you hear? Did someone sign it to you? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be outside tomorrow morning. You know? I said, you can't bullshit me. You just said you can't hear, and then you said you heard it. Now what? <laughs> now who's Perry Mason? <laughs> I'm crossing like examining. Schimmel's pit. Well, that, that's what how I, does you know, a blind guy know when he's done wiping his ass? <laughs> I know, that's, a, that's a great one. Uh, d- d- yeah, d- d- honestly... Uh, and then I, I messed up. The woman uh, for the, the Deaf League uh, was uh, not a looker. She looked, <laughs> as Woody Allen says in Broadway, Danny Rose, she looked like something you might find in a live bait shop. <laughs> uh, and uh, and I, I compounded the problem because uh, we FaceTimed. And uh, I said, uh, I said, you know what? Uh, you're deaf and I wish I was blind. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's sending someone to punch me in the face. I, you know, on the set... You actually got on FaceTime, just the two of you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I butt time. I butt FaceTime. <laughs> I butt FaceTime you. Uh, she I'll liked a little butt FaceTime. Yeah, I was working on my butt face, uh, my butt time, uh, like, uh, jokes. I, I have one where I, Kim Kardashian accidentally butt, uh, butt dials everyone she knows. <laughs> uh, she actually butt times North America. Uh, you know, nothing. Kanye West, how about that? What about that? I predicted that the guy's a lunatic. The yeah, guy's what a, happened? He yeah, had he, a... he had a me- breakdown. He was—he wasn't making any sense. You know, basically though, he was saying, "Oh, summer rhymes with a bender." <laughs> <laughs> He, just, he started to employ Sean. They put him in the nut house. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Kanye. Yo, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no breaker. <laughs> What happened? He was he was ranting and he then he just stage. passed out. He was on stage being Kanye West. Okay, he's always a fucking uh, annoying prick. I have a theory. You you go a guy goes in that Kardashian house and they go crazy. <laughs> A yeah, couple of months, they're nuts. <laughs> Look, Kanye West's in a fucking loony bend. He's screaming on stage. The guy used to be an amazing, articulate performer, right? Uh, Bruce Jenner's abroad. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, and I don't mean he's overseas. And uh, and uh, Lamar Odom is just smoking an insane amount of crack. Like, because of those fucking broads. They're nuts. Mm. Chris Jenner. Look what she did to the, the, the Kardashian father. He fucking, well, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> That poor guy hid the knife for OJ, and that's what you get. He hides the knife for He's probably in hell right now watching Kim get fucked by Ray J on a loop. <laughs> no. On a loop. <laughs> Fucking he gets OJ off, she gets Ray J off. <laughs> no. Yeah. I hope, I, I hope, I want, I want to check the deaf side on that one. How about that one? That shit joke, honey. Sorority girls, that's who hired her. So politically correct. Sorority girls, they were so offended by everything. What are you even hiring comedians for? I did a, uh, you know, I did a college show. Was, I, you know, I didn't know uh, until I got there, but it was an all uh, all girls college. Yeah, that sounds fun. And it was uh, well, it sounds fun, but it was like a very religious 
<laughs> yeah, I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. That's even worse. Well, all girls' school. I oh mean, you're a young God. man. You're like, ah, this could be good. Yeah, but then it's religious. But then it's a religious school, and uh, oh, there's a terrible. girl in the crowd in a wheelchair. Extremely. So it just gets funnier and funnier. Uh, no, and she's heckling me. <laughs> And she's being mean. Oh man! And I, I can't do anything. I just like really? suffered through the set because I like. What am I going to do? Gonna, you know what you do? You go, hey Ironside, hey Ironside, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you do a reference. I don't know. <laughs> I know that is that's a tough situation. It's brutal. Well, you know, I, I needed the money. I was like, I could, you know, <laughs> on my conscience, I think I could attack this girl because she's really fucking me up right now. Well, you know what you can. But attack- I need to get paid for this gig. You so can, you know what? What's great? You can attack her as. Brutally as possible, you know. For a fact, she's not going to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a bad show. Then. That would have been like, whoa, wait, where you go? <laughs> Dude, I did a show. He's reminding me of a show in uh, in Manchester, England, a comedy store in Manchester. Right, I, I know of it. Sure. Uh, there's like eight, uh, maybe six guys in the show. We're all hanging out, you know, backstage. Yeah. First guy goes out. Doesn't sound so great. We can't see, but we can hear. Right. Sounds something's not right. Something's off. Right. And we go out and look, and we see that the entire audience is people with extreme physical handicaps, different types. <laughs> oh, oh my the god! The whole crowd, and they didn't tell us. Oh. And I gotta go. No, I'm not going on until the end. Everybody's going out there and not acknowledging it. <laughs> Everyone's afraid to say anything. It's tough, yeah. And uh, so that's basically what I said when I went out. I said, "Boy, this would have to have a horrible show for this crowd to get up and walk out on you." <laughs> And they and they fucking loved it. They were yeah, like, "Thanks, not? somebody yeah, acknowledged yeah, exactly. it." Exactly. You got We're not all that. just sitting here pretending that it's not a reality. Well, the, the, actually, you know, the worst thing ever. And I've told a story before. There's a disease called Prado Willie disease. That uh, these these teenage people, you could Google this. Teenage people, they they don't have a, a like some sort of gene or chromosome that lets them know they're full when they're eating. <laughs> So if you leave them to their own devices, they will eat till they explode. They don't stop eating. Jesus. It's an actual disease. It's like dogs. Dogs Pro- have that. Well, Prada Willie disease. And the, 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 the parents are, are like, they're all, they're all tired. They hire like people to tackle them from an ice cream truck. Like it, it's, it's a dark, but it's like, <laughs> you, you can't help but see the humor. The, the humor is here. There's, a, there's one called uh, Madeline. It's the name of the 17-year-old girl. She's 400 pounds. She looks like Dick Buckus. And the, the the parents built a fence around her, which uh, you know uh, I think Trump should hire these same people for Mexico <laughs> because uh, it's like she didn't have an ice cream bar. So I'm hired to do stand up. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I, I got these fat jokes, and I'm like, what am I going to do now? I get up there, and a woman uh, who uh, I didn't know she had an affliction. The, the, the end of the story gets that she had a, a bandana around her head, and I thought she was like a biker or something. I don't know why. And uh, she had a big red bandana around her. And I'm going, what am I going to do? There was a big buffet at the Prada Willie thing. There was a big, like, you know, carving station. And uh, I said, maybe I'd make a joke out of that, but I shouldn't make a joke out of that. I had to follow a 10-minute fucking video on Prada Willie disease. Oh, Jesus. So I get up there. Everybody's crying. And this woman uh, says uh, 10 minutes because uh, her, uh, her niece has it. And she's got the, the red bandana. She leaves. And here's what I say. I don't know the woman has cancer. I, I thought she was like, I, I swear to God, because there were like like all types. There. there were bikers there. I thought she was with the bikers. Uh, I said, who is that, Prada Willie Nelson? <laughs> oh. Because of the bandana. Because of the bandana. I thought it was going to destroy. In my head, I'm thinking this will destroy. There, there was like, again, like a silence that could cut. The, the, like you, you felt the physical, like the silence was picking me up and, and slamming my nose into its knee. <laughs> the air was and completely it, removed I said, from the room. Prada Willie Nelson. And uh, to this day, I stand by, I think it's funny. But uh, she had cancer. And she was like, like I, I never, I, it's the only, I bailed. I didn't do the whole set. And I said, uh, I can't. Uh, I can't get paid for this. They were going to pay. I said, I'll, I'll get my own way home. I'll pick up the hotel. I checked out of the hotel. I don't want the people to know where I was. <laughs> I, 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 it, was, it, was it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. Uh, you know, wow. and I've been to Met Red Games. <laughs> I, 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 I never said, I never thought, like, in other words, you get an instinct in this business. I never had a, a more wrong instinct of thinking Prada Willie Nelson would get a laugh. Wow. I should not have said Prada Willie Nelson. <laughs> I should have assumed she has cancer. I mean, I why else? That, was, uh, yeah. It's, not, it's never good when someone has or brings up cancer on a show. <laughs> oh. 
I was at a, <laughs> well, the first time I at a comedy there, show. Yeah. It's like no, I know. I well, was at, it, at the uh, stress factory, right? And there's a uh, uh, I'm killing. It's going great. Yeah. There's a couple just off the stage to the left there. Right. You know the tables right up by the stage. Right. And they're just frowning the whole time. Yeah. Just frowning. Everybody around them is like dancing and right. high fiving right, and going right, crazy. Right. They're just sitting there frowning at me. <laughs> so you know how we are. You notice the ones, the one. You, everyone could be laughing. You notice the one guy who's not. All right. So finally, I'm like, I go, I go. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Yeah. Everybody's laughing. They're having a great time. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you guys? And the guy, the guy goes, I have cancer. Uh, no. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, and I go, uh, I had no idea what to do. I said, uh, I said, thanks. Now we all do. <laughs> and he laughed, and he fucking laughed. Yeah. And then it was, and then it was okay. Like somehow right, yeah. we got past it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But it was like a, a you, bomb. It's just like, uh, you no. Know, well, that had, listen, don't you, say that. Even you if it's done, the truth, you should have Paulie Shore. Yo, yeah, Robert <laughs> Frowning Junior. Uh, the frowning pool. What's going on? <laughs> Robert Frowny Jr. Yo, That's pretty fucking funny. Turn right? that frowning upside down, Nib. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? We have cancer. Wait, is that Paul Shore? <laughs> He's our favorite. Oh, what's can you, can you do the old cancer. song? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I have cancer. Oh, thank you. you could, could you have picked a worse time to that's let like, me know? That's a no. That's like a, the, my favorite Baywatch episode. Episode ever is uh, David Hasselhoff falls in love with this um, Australian chick who's uh, who's he's going to marry. He's finally going to settle down, and when he asks her, she looks at him real dramatic and goes, "I have consummate." <laughs> 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 And in that Australian accent, like it's the worst acting ever. I have consummate. <laughs> and then you know, it's like, and then Paul Shore comes and goes, "You'll throw another cancer on the baby. <laughs> throw another oh, chemo." I didn't understand what you were saying. She, she said, has cancer. Have... She goes, "I have consummate." Oh, cancer, Mitch. And he's Mitch. He's Mitch. That's yeah. right. Well, uh, yeah, Mitch yeah. Baywatch, right? right Mitch that... on Baywatch. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's not his name. I thought his I, name I... was Mitch Baywatch. <laughs> 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 Yeah. No, you're thinking of heart to heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's her name. Heart to heart. Yo, Mitch Bewatch. <laughs> like, Paulie Shore just jumps in every scene that's not working. It is. It's funny. It's still funny. Yeah, hire him. Yeah. Well, what's not working here? <laughs> I'll say, well, I'll make it work. Mm, asshole. Uh, I have every Paulie. Uh, you know, remember the Paulie sitcom? I have every one on tape. No. Do you really? Yeah. It's one It's one of them. It's one. He lets not watch those. <laughs> It's actually just one episode. <laughs> I have the whole have the whole run. Yeah, I said. Uh, I said. Uh, I forgot he had a show. Paul. Yeah, everyone did. <laughs> I said to him. I said, Paul, that must have been frustrating. You were just a hundred and two episodes away from syndication. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're not ready for the story. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready for the story. Go pick me up some cigarettes, some cantaloupe juice. <laughs> Uh, well, listen. So you, you uh, you're at the cellar all the time. How often are you on the road? Uh, I go out like twice a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, again, you know, you got a chance to see Ben uh, check it out. He's as good as a comic gets. And this new project thing, I love. I want to see your special. I'm going to check it out as soon as I can. Thanks, I, man. Yeah, it's called I, Live and Uncensored. Uh, Live and Uncensored, and the the name of the the, the project, the, the whole uh, the website uh, thing, and the, the real Ben Bailey dot com. The real go to the real Ben Bailey dot com. There's two short films on there that I made. Uh, one's a new character that I came up with. Uh -huh. uh, his name is Blam, <laughs> which stands for uh, Badly Written Action Man. <laughs> so I'm like an action hero guy whose uh, lines are, you know, <laughs> whose lines are terribly written. <laughs> and then there's another short film that, uh, you know, Judah Freelander. Yeah, sure. Judah and I made a movie like 12 years ago about two idiots trying to meet up for pizza in New York, <laughs> but they're meeting at Ray's, and there's like you know there's like <laughs> seventy different Ray's pizzas. So that's called Meet Me at Ray's. That's up there. Uh, that's idea. The special. There's a podcast which I love to have you on when you tell a story. Uh, anytime, man. Anytime. I'll let you know. We'll ex we'll exchange info. Yeah, yeah. About that before I go, but yeah, that'd be great, man. You have so many awesome stories. It's uh, crazy. I got some stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check it out. 
<laughs> ben, ben rhymes with Sven. <laughs> oh, some. Uh, that was his closure. That's fucking hilarious. Yo, anybody ever noticed that? A summer rhyme with the baby. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> we should look into that, Mr. FBI, man. <laughs> he just fucks 46. The most frustrating thing. Here's the answer. If you, if you dislike somebody... Here's the worst answer they could give to this question. I said to him on Stern, hey, Paulie, how many Playboy playmates have you fucked? And he went, I don't know. I wanted to strangle. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't sure. I don't he know. He couldn't remember how many. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If you say to me, Art, how many times uh, have you uh, have you mistaken stretch marks for, for like a rash? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how many times did you fail math? I don't know. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every time, I don't know how many times all I the have. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't remember anything about it. How many times did you wake up with a White Castle uh, fifty pack on your chest? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So I'm right up there with your playmate fucking stories. <laughs> Can you buy a fifty pack at White Castle? They have them. Yeah. Wow. They're the worst. Thing. You know, they were there was like a, a national. Uh, thing done where they they investigate all the fast food restaurants yeah. to see which ones were the cleanest. Were they the cleanest? I hope White Castle was the clean the the no kidding. the cleanest one. That's amazing. You think about that. It's rated number one as the Rat the, Burger. Yeah, you know why? But it's White Castle. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> yeah, let's just put a joke on a joke. Red, red. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a color that wouldn't offend ah, someone. Every color offends. <laughs> right, red offensive. Green. Yellow, green is Irish. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but you know they what? won't mind. I, you know, They'll be like, you're right, we're fucking dirty. Here's how much of an Italian <laughs> asshole I was. See if you're offended by this. I was not, I, I was afraid to totally commit to St. Patrick's Day. So as a kid and a teenager, I would, on St. Patrick's Day, I would wear a shirt with a picture of Lauren Green on it. <laughs> 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 a bonanza shirt. Yeah, I do it. I find that the young kids don't uh, laugh at that, so I change it to CeeLo Green. I use it. Oh, that's a good adjustment. Not as funny. Mm -hmm. uh, yo, CeeLo! It's still pretty funny. It's still good. <laughs> CeeLo and Lauren, and they related, I don't think so. Lauren Green. <laughs> Lauren Green. And I would say, about the youngest people who would get a Lauren Green reference. <laughs> 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 oh, the old St. Patrick's Day in New York City, man. I used to go sometime. I miss those days, those politically incorrect days of like, you know, you could just turn over anything, like a Fiat, a car, you turn it over, don't, families could be in it. How about Giuliani, how honest he was with the Puerto Rican Day Parade? He would just go, listen, batten up the hatches. <laughs> Do you have plywood? Just put it over your, put it over your wheels and get the hell out of town. <laughs> That's what he said every every year before they'll say Puerto Rican Day Parade. Rudy. And the concept of parades, first of all. You know, people are dying in ambulances because the fucking Ukrainians have to march. <laughs> Give me a break. Let's just cut out the parades. I'm, I'm an eye tie. You can take the Columbus Day Parade and shove it up your ass. I don't need it. It's not that anymore anyway. People are changing that now too. Nothing's the same name anymore. You know, I, I, when I was a kid, I used to go buy fireworks at the, you ever buy fireworks on Canal Street there? Yup. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> you, know how, you know how embarrassing it is that you know, how awkward it is? You, nowadays you have to buy African-American chasers. Oh, God. Jeez. Cut the bed laughing at that. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite joke you've done. <laughs> uh, uh, well, listen, man. This uh, this is just uh, you're, you're nearby, right? Where do you live? I live out in Jersey, just yeah, a little bit out. Right, in Morristown. Come by anytime you want. I'd love to do your podcast. Yeah, come tell a story, man. I'd love to have you on. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I definitely, without question. Just let me know. I, you know, I'm around, so I, I know uh, you have great stories. Like, yeah. what, if you have a favorite story to tell, that would well, be great. I, I, I got a lot of them actually. Uh, and then we'll we'll just go. We'll do our topic around that. You know. Okay. You know DC Benny. Yes, absolutely. He's my. We used to do a show uh, called Urban Myth. Right. It was every Tuesday at a place called Zinc Bar. I know where that is. That well, that's now that's where the old Bag It In used to be downstairs from the Boston Comedy that's, Club. That's right, Zinc Bar. I just did a set there. It, you, so, but it yeah, used yeah. to be on Houston Zinc right. Bar. Well, I just did a set at what you're talking about. Though. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's at the at the Zinc there, Bar. There's a, there's wait a minute. No, no. Okay, no. There's another one on West Third Street next to where the Boston Boston Comedy Club used to be. That I did a set at. It's not. The, yeah, yeah. The, well, that's where Zinc Bar is right, now. Yeah, okay. Back in the day, it was on Houston. Right. And we would do. Or it was called Urban Myth. It was a storytelling show. 
and we basically decided that we're going to do a, uh, a podcast version of that show. Okay. So it's just stories. That's it, man. We pick a topic. We each tell a story uh, about that topic. Okay. You know? I have a, I have a story on every topic except rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to invite you in for rollerblading story night. <laughs> can I check? Can I, I can uh, come out with well, one? Right? Can we substitute for rollerblading? Can we substitute running guns to Cuba? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so, listen. Anything you have a chance to? Uh, and, uh, does the old cash cap still uh, air? Once in a while, they put it's it still the say, yeah, reruns are still on. The yeah. Honeymooners of game shows. I, I have the cab at my house. I'll show so, you. That's great. I'll show it to you. If you that's want. awesome. We'll go and, sit in it. And, and in a way. And I remember the twenty two hundred I didn't get. Can I give it to my fucking? Put you right back in that seat. <laughs> yeah. And we'll call Quinn. You know, one of the final questions was again. You don't realize how, like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a loser, so I know stuff like this. Like, yeah. What, what? Who's the band known as the Thunder Down Under? Uh, ACDC. I think that, that nailed it. That's you, right. You had that. Uh, that uh, was that question. The ACDC question. Yeah. And first of all, twenty two hundred. If Khan had gotten that a little fucking quicker, by the way, <laughs> Mister, <laughs> is this on showing me up in the deaf thing? <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, we would have with... five grand. Yeah, you would have. Uh... Yeah, we like something like that. Yeah, it was a lot of. Well, you would have got. You would have gotten another two hundred bucks, I think. <laughs> you know, <what's> <laughs> it you know, wasn't the, the double or nothing because right, if you lost right, that, exactly. you would you would have left with nothing. You know, then Kyle and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred dollars, Quinn. You I son of a bitch. You son of a fuck you, Arnie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Arnie. Two hundred fucks. <laughs> I stuck my head into the lounge, uh, like I guess a month ago. Colin was in there. I don't know what he was talking. Oh, that's about. right. Yeah, because they did do stand up in that. Don't you? I don't know the context at all, but he, I, I just overheard like a random little bit, and he was like, uh, <laughs> he goes, uh, "What did he say?" He goes, "So I see this guy, and I don't know." Uh, if he's fighting with this flamingo or just uh, trying to wrestle it into a truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a good point. I love it. Was like, what was he talking if a about? a real good comic, that's a great idea, too. A real good comic uh, is, is doing a set. You just push your head and say, what is he saying right now? That's funny. Like, you what, just take a, a random Yeah, tip. yeah, yeah. Because one time I, I do that with <laughs> Dave Attell sometimes, and there was a midget in the front row. And uh, he was in the midget's face, and all this is all I heard. What can't you reach today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a little person here. <laughs> he put him on the piano. <laughs> you, you used uh, to have a, a whole midget chunk and tell to me. Yeah, no, I, I have, I, I do a midget thing because. Um, well, yeah, and this is a true story. I saw a little person, uh, I saw a midget, a midget complaining about this on TV. He said calling a little person a midget is the same thing as calling a black man the N-word. So I, I went out with Dan. I tried both things. <laughs> no. And I got to tell you, let me save you some time. <laughs> There's a huge difference. <laughs> one will get you smacked in the shin, and the other one will get you locked in the trunk of an impala. <laughs> At, uh, that was my best joke for a while. Of those jokes. That's Midget, a funny joke. Yeah, is but, that true? Midget? They don't. Midget they, is not. They don't like that. Oh. They like to be called. Uh, actually, yeah, tell us have a good I apologize. joke. Apologize. Yeah. What do you call midget? Apologize they want to be people. called little people. You know what? They want, they want to be called people. <laughs> <laughs> we, He's right about that. I'll give you. The, a He's have a bit about a uh, a little person who was yeah. late for work. <laughs> he'd show up late for work, and he'd be like, "You're late," and he'd go, "Look at these little legs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're lucky I made it at all." I think you know what. Okay, I do a movie with Norm Macdonald. Uh, I do this storytelling you talk about, mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a, a midget in one of the scenes, and it was a midget that there's one midget in Toronto. He was, he was in every movie, and uh, his name was Paul Herrera or something. So um, uh, the call sheet comes out, and it says Norm Macdonald, eight a.m. Arnie Lang, eight a.m. It says midget, eight a.m. So midget. Then how the, guy's oh the midget's agent goes nuts. He starts screaming. He goes, oh, we're, we're not coming in today. That's the most offensive thing. I, you got to change. That's ridiculous. He's got a name like Artie and Norm. He's not a You know, if it said Artie, like it just said Italian fat guy, you know, you know and he's true. He's like, a midget. <laughs> not midget. He's a guy. His name's Paul. Paul Herrera is his name. And uh, everybody was very, like, political correctness was just coming in. They were very unpinned. So, okay, uh, some kid in the office typed up the next uh, schedule. We'll call that kid the funniest person ever. <laughs> because I, what he, I wake up the next day, you know. This is normal uh, 8 a.m. morning. Like, and this is Paul the Midget, 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It was. I, I just. I. I was almost late because I was laughing. The the, 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 <laughs> the, the agent now goes ballistic to put the fucking producer. Who the fuck did that? Or whatever you know. And we all know. I'm like, don't fire that guy. Let him rewrite the movie. <laughs> and uh, that reminds and, me of like the classic British heck. Uh, 
story, comedy club story. What? There's a guy, uh, they have all these great stories about right. classic heckles and stuff. Sure. But uh, one of them, a guy comes out and does, I can't remember the comic's name, comes out and does a, a bit about midgets or right. dwarfs. He's calling them yeah, dwarfs. Yeah, yeah. Same shit. And, uh, and there's a, a little person in the crowd Right, who comes walking out? He's just finished this big whole long <laughs> chunk about midgets or dwarfs, and a, a dwarf, a little person, comes walking up <laughs> down the aisle and just stands in the aisle, staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks and he says, uh, "He says, I, I'm sorry, have I offended you?" Uh. And uh, <laughs> and the and the guy goes, "You have offended me. I'm really upset, and it's my birthday." <laughs> And the comic goes, uh, he goes, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, let's let, let me make it up to you. Let's. Uh, he just starts singing, uh, "Happy birthday <laughs> to you." And the whole crowd starts singing, <laughs> "Happy birthday," and they don't realize that they don't know the guy's fucking name. <laughs> so it. it comes around to the, that part, and they all go, the whole place goes, "Happy birthday, dear dwarf." <laughs> 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 that guy gets he's just furious and storms out. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, the the the, the what the, the kicker is. I almost got I, I said big trouble because he finally made up with the guy because the guy the the, the, the midget claimed to like get other uh, midgets and and, and uh, protest uh, like the movie like uh, with uh, with signs and, and walk around like you know a real like live like what they used to do with strikes and the next day. Um, People were joking around in front of the, the agent, and I didn't realize who the agent was because I never met the guy. And uh, people said, "Well, at least they didn't uh, protest with signs." And I said, "They did. You just couldn't see the signs." Oh. <laughs> and uh, he, said, he said, "Can we have? Uh, can, can any any more shitty short jokes you want to do before I sue the fuck out of you guys?" <laughs> that's what the agent uh, said. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, I said, "Oh, I don't know." Well, tell your client from now on when it starts to rain, I'm not going to tell him. No. <laughs> In his driver license picture, you can see his feet. We could go on forever. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is actually offensive. They don't like to be called agents. <laughs> <laughs> Midget agent. Oh, you know what? Actually, one of the, the, the you remember the basketball player Ann Freddie Hardaway. Mm-hmm. Ann Freddie. Yep. This is true. His mother thought that was how you spelled Anthony. That's why his name's Ann Freddie. That's absolutely true. Yes, wow. that's a true story. I did not and know that. Confirmed by Ann Freddie Hardaway. But and, I have to admit that I always wondered. Well, yeah. Confirmed by Ann Freddie is an and, interesting and again, name. It's not again, one you've heard before. Much like the Nazi thing, here's the joke I get in trouble with at the end of a Conan thing. I said, well, cut this out because it's got boot though. I tell that. Which is true, and then I said, "We have Patrick Ewing has a similar story." And he goes, "Cole says really." He goes, "Yeah, that's how his mother thought you spelled Anthony." No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the joke, of course, is Patrick's nowhere near. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, uh, I you got in trouble for that. Yeah, well, Cole had left it in. Mm. I said, "Throw me a fucking line here." <laughs> <laughs> Louis lives. Louis's drunk, and he's leaving in the Nazi shit. Before you know it, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be out of it. I'll be working construction on Friday. <laughs> this fucking politically correct bullshit. That's why I'm podcasting. I don't care. We have no, it's just me and Dan. <laughs> All I can offend is Dan. And that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> At least he himself. seems unoffendable over he there. Just, well, no, he's very, I am. No, he's he very smiles offended. and laughs no matter laugh. what. When he doesn't laugh, he's offended. <laughs> that's his protest. He's quiet. That's his protest against me. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's very good. liberal. No. Of all the most left wing fucking commie. You remember when uh, when Joy Behar had a show, had a, like a talk show? Yeah, yeah. We call that um, uh, in my family. We call that the dark years. <laughs> <laughs> you know but what she you call had? It? She had this guy as a producer who, was, who would always laugh. Right, you could hear him on the show laughing. Oh yeah, yeah. not that I, I watched it much, but I, I was a guest on it once. Right, yeah, and, I was uh, too. Yeah, there's a couple of comics on there, and it was like it was almost like a panel, like a multi-person panel. You'd right, everybody would like chime in about whatever topic. Oh, that, okay, yeah. And uh, the co- the other comics like we kind of got in a battle. It was like they were trying. Everybody's trying to get the attention and <laughs> like, get the laughs. Like a hip hop battle, and they kept stepping on each other. Oh, like that's thing. the worst. Yeah, and it, it didn't it didn't flow like it was supposed to, and the and the producer guy didn't make a sound <laughs> the whole time. And then when we were leaving, 
uh, I said, <laughs> I said, I go, I go, boy, did you guys fuck that up? <laughs> and you hear the producer from way back nice. behind us. You're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's when you need a guy like that. Yeah, so the first time we well, heard the guy laugh. Joy Bayard, you know what? Like ironic nicknames when you go the fat guy tiny. That's, yeah, yeah. that's why she's Joy. <laughs> <laughs> We do a cheap version of the view. We, this is the obstructed view. <laughs> I don't really know her. I just got I got invited on there. You can't ever get to, had, you never get to know a genius like Joy. She had no. Tony Danza on there as a guest yeah. too. Oh really? Yeah, he was he called in. He was like, Hey Joy, how you doing? And he goes, Who's the guy? <laughs> Who's the guy with the voice? Is that what he said? That's he what he said about, about me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Who's the guy? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's talking about her. Who's the guy with the voice? <laughs> <laughs> and you should have said, hey, Tony, who, uh, who's the boss? <laughs> <laughs> Samantha. It's me. <laughs> Angela. Tony, uh, is, he's named after the one award he wants to win. For Iceman Cometh. <laughs> Five-hour play. He, uh, that was the best. He was an Iceman Cometh. And every day in the Daily News, there was an article about how he yelled at somebody in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> After five hours, he's doing like, you know, this, uh, like an Ibsen play. Uh, five, uh, Iceman guy, they go, hey, what, what you, put the cigarette out. <laughs> what are you, at the office? Put the Blackberry away. <laughs> <laughs> and they tap danced and kicked his ass. Mm. Uh, listen, Ben, this was a joy. Come back anytime, man. Thanks, man. This, this was a great, joy, joy great Behar. Mm-hmm. This was a joy, a pure Joy Behar. You, uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm going to come and do your show, and I, I, uh, I, I thank you for coming, man, and uh, thank you for being so nice to me and my uncle and cousin. Oh, they, absolutely. They still Dude, get a kick out of that, and you were great on that show, and uh, much more to come, man. Thanks, bro. Uh, and uh, I'll see you soon. The great Ben Bailey. Ben, uh, that's Dan.